that's good. 437, 437. Since the Savior found me, pardon all my sin. I'm saved, saved, saved. Let's all stand together and sing 437 together. On that first. Since the Savior found me, pardon all my sin. I have had the joy and living hope within. Gone is all the sin and sorrow of the past. There underneath the precious blood of Christ at last. Save, 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 I'm happy all the way. Save, 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 I love him more he saved. Save, 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 I know he's mighty charm. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Since the Savior found me, all to him I owe. For his precious blood has washed me white as snow. Now the condemnation, happy as can be. I'm glad that Jesus justifies and sets me free. I'm saved, saved, saved. I'm happy all the way. Saved, saved, saved. I love him for his sake. Saved, saved, saved. I know his mighty charm. He saved and keeps and sanctifies me by his since the Savior found me, I have perfect rest, living in the room of joy and happiness, leaning on my Savior, looking for that day when he shall come to catch his waiting right away. I'm saved, 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 I'm happy on the way. Saved, 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 I love him more each day. Saved, 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 I know he's mighty. One more time. I'm saved, saved, saved. I'm happy all the way. Saved, saved, saved. I love him more each day. Saved, saved, saved. I know he's mighty tar. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Amen. That's good singing. Uh, isn't it great to sing Save, Save, Save? Amen. Uh, I know four people in this room that are singing it tonight that couldn't sing it this morning. Amen. Amen. And uh, Laurel, Mercedes, Jeff, and David. Amen. All four accepted Christ as their Savior this morning. And uh, they're back tonight to get baptized. Amen. Amen. And uh, it's exciting times. And uh, great to just watch them sing that song right there. And uh, wonderful, wonderful. Thanks for being in church tonight, coming back on Sunday evening. Looking forward to what the Lord has for us this evening. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. Thank you, Lord, for the great salvation that you provided for us through Jesus Christ. Thank you for so loving the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And, Lord, we love you this evening. We pray that you will meet with us tonight. Give us what we need on this Sunday evening. Thank you for the faithfulness of people that come to church on a Sunday night. Lord, give us what we need now this evening. We uh, commit the service to you. I pray you'll be pleased. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. 361 together, 361. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep vale. 361 on that verse. Walking in sunlight all of my journey Through the deep hill Jesus has said I'll never forsake thee Promise divine that never can fail Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight Flooding my soul with glory divine Are you walking in sunlight tonight? Ladies, why don't you sing that second verse? Men will join you on the chorus. Ladies, shadows around me. Guys, 
blessing that's theirn in the bright sunlight ever rejoicing pressing my way to mansions above singing in praise gladly I'm walking walking in sunlight Right, a few announcements now. Listen carefully, if you will. Ladies, don't forget, tomorrow night is your ladies' night out, and uh, you signed up down there. Looks like a great group coming. And I got a note. It's singing in the rain, by the way, and you're going to meet at 6.30. It's 3.50, and you're having breakfast for dinner, all right? And uh, good time over there. I've just handed a note here that says, please have the ladies bring scissors Monday night. I don't know if that means the bacon stuff or what it is, but uh, bring the scissors along, and uh, that. Don't run with the scissors, but just uh, bring the scissors with you tomorrow evening, all right? It's something to do with what you're going to be doing, and uh, so have a great time there uh, tomorrow evening. Regular schedule, Wednesday night for the midweek service at 7 o'clock, and our good Wednesday service. If you don't know what that means, listen to the radio broadcast tomorrow, okay? Uh, we'll be talking about the hoax of Good Friday, and... Uh, <gasps> You listen to that, and it'll help you, okay? And uh, I'm sure we'll get some uh, feedback on that program. But uh, that'll be tomorrow. Good Wednesday night service, 7 o'clock as usual. And then, of course, uh, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, next Sunday morning. And uh, Sunday evening of next week, the choir will be doing God's Holy Lamb uh, cantata. And uh, you will enjoy the music and the narration. Uh, it'll be a blessing, and we'll celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. We're the only uh, religion that can celebrate a living Savior. Amen. And uh, you go to the tomb and it's empty. Amen. No one else can do that, just Amen. us. And so uh, praise the Lord for that. Amen? Amen. And so we'll look forward to a great week together. Now, we want to take just a moment. We'll welcome our guests that are with us tonight. Anybody here tonight for the very first time? I know we've got a radio listener back here. And uh, Brother Chuck is visiting with us. He's a radio listener and came in to see what it's all about. Amen. And uh, good to have you tonight on Sunday night, Brother Chuck. Thanks Amen. for coming in. All right. Good to see the Everhart's here to see you. Good to see Amen. you folks here. Thank you for coming in. And um, glad you're here tonight. All right. The rest of us are uh, us folks. We so Usually the Wednesday night folks are here on Sunday night, huh? Good to see you this evening. Amen. Good to have both of you here. Great. Amen. All right, if you'll take just a moment and fill the guest card out there, Brother Chuck, we appreciate you doing that. In a little bit, we have an offering. Just throw that card in the plate and keep the pen as our gift to you for coming tonight. We're glad you're here. Let's give them a warm welcome, shall we?
463 in your hymnal, 463. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there on that verse together. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. His chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sight, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be love and care, that when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called of yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called of yonder, 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 yonder. singing tonight. Would you turn over to 180 with me? 180. God will take care of you. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Would you all stand with me if you would? 180 on that first together. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love. And greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guest. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
they need, He will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. Let's sing that last together. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. All together now. God will take care of you. Every day or all the way, He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Be seated if you will. Great singing this evening. The ushers will come and get our offering now tonight. Continue to be faithful in our giving and especially your faith promise for missions and uh, take care of our missionaries and um, just uh, doing a great job. And boy, if you miss Wednesday night, you really missed a blessing. I'd go back uh, on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. There's a link to that from the website, uh, YouTube uh, live stream and catch that service Wednesday night. Brother Fitzsimmons was just outstanding and a great, great time together. And uh, pick that up if you missed it. You'll receive a blessing from that. All right. Let's pray for the offering this evening. I'm going to ask Brother Linderman to lead us in our prayer, please. Father, again, we just come to you, Lord, and thank you for loving us the way you do, Father, taking care of us the way you do, Lord, and for being much more good, Lord, than we even deserve. We just want to thank you, Father, for that. Lord, help us to uh, use the tithes wisely that we can see souls saved, Lord, for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Take your Bibles this evening, if you would, please, for our scripture reading to Genesis chapter 5, please. Genesis chapter 5. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 5. We are going to read verses 22, 23, and 24. Genesis 5, 22, 23, and 24. And they're just short verses. We'll read them all in unison. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And let's begin together on verse number 22 
of Genesis chapter 5. Ready? And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And let's pray. Father, we ask you to bless the reading of the scripture here this evening. Lord, thank you so much already for the wonderful music tonight, for the good spirit that's here in this place. Lord, it's always good to be with the people of God. And Lord, we or ask you to continue to minister to each individual here tonight by your spirit. I pray you'll bless the special this evening to continue to prepare our hearts that we'll be ready to receive the truth from your word this evening. And Lord, may the word of God work effectually in each of us as we listen to it tonight. May we hear it in faith, believing it, and ready to live out the truths we learned this evening. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. to you that your love come shining through give me lord a servant's heart give me lord a servant's heart now father we bow before you in prayer and Lord, again, we come to the preaching of your word, and we ask you, God, to honor the preaching once again. We thank you for the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for giving us copies of your word that we have on our hands tonight. Lord, I pray that each of us would give our careful attention to your word this evening. And Spirit of God, speak to our hearts tonight. I want to be a help. I want to be a blessing. I want to be an encouragement to your people this evening. And God, we want to learn. We want to take steps in the same direction as you. We want to learn what it is to walk with God and to know you, not just know about you, but to know you. And so, Lord, help us. And I pray that we'll be different when we leave this place than when we came into this place tonight. It's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Go ahead and open your Bible again there to the book of Genesis. We'll, we'll start there. We'll be turning to other scriptures as we get into the, the study here this evening, and uh, well, technology's, technology's great, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. The, uh, you know, the Christian, and by the way, I, I meant what I prayed, I, uh, 
not that there's times I don't mean what I pray, but I, I meant what I prayed, and it's like the preacher always says, the honest truth is. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, the, um, I want to be very practical uh, for you tonight. I told you I was going to talk about this subject of walking with God. Um, you read here in Genesis 5 about Enoch who walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Over in Genesis chapter 6, in verse number 9, it says, These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah did what? Walked with God. Uh, two men here in a very wicked day walked with God. Now, the Bible says we have three enemies. All right? The, the Christian has three enemies. We have the world, the flesh, and the devil. All right, and we're at, we're at war with each of those. The world, by the way, the world is the world system, um, and what the world brings to the Christian, what the what the world tries to, to to get the Christian to follow, I think, is the pace of the world, busyness, uh, speed, hurry. You ever notice that if you drive in Columbus traffic, everybody's in a hurry. And they want to get there before you do. But the, but the world's moving at a very fast pace. How many times have you said to yourself or you heard somebody else say, boy, I just don't have the time. The other enemy is the flesh, and that's, that's uh, this stuff that all of us have. And the Bible says the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. That means the flesh doesn't hold up very well to outside pressure that the Satan brings into our lives to get us to go after what we want. It gives in to what the body wants. I'm tired, I'm going to go to sleep. I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. I lust after something and I'm going to go get it. So you say, well, don't you have any willpower? No, the flesh is weak. And it doesn't hold up very well under any kind of persuasion or or, or outside pressure. And then there's the devil. He's deceitful. The Bible says he's subtle. And he comes with trickery and deception. Appeals to the flesh, by the way, and tries to get us to go our own way. Satan doesn't matter what way you go, just so you don't go God's way. And let me help you with something. Most Christians struggle enough with the world and the flesh, Satan isn't involved with us very much. You have to understand something. Satan is not omnipresent. Don't, you got, don't get the picture that there's God and there's Satan and there's this epic struggle between these two titans of power. It's not even close. Remember, God is almighty. There's no one like Him. Besides me, God says, there is none else. Satan is a created being. Okay, There's no, no, no contest. And Satan, though, is only going to be at one place at one time. So most of the time when we say, well, the devil's after me, uh, probably not. But I'll guarantee you the world and the flesh is after you. Now, Satan has many helpers. There's principalities, there's powers, there's the rulers of darkness of this world. And he may have dispatched some of his minions to come after you, to, to lure you off the path, to get you to go your own way. All we like sheep have gone astray, we've turned everyone to his own way. When we go astray from God, it's usually because we're going our own way. And Satan's okay with that, just so we don't go God's way. And so we have the world, the flesh, and the devil. Now, Lest you think we live an extremely evil day, we do. But I don't think we're any worse than what they were in Genesis when God destroyed the whole world because of a flood. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 5, the Bible said, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. God said, it repents me that I made man, it grieves me at my heart. That man has gotten this bad this quickly. 
So he decides he's got to destroy the earth with a flood. Now listen, so here's the time on earth when the thoughts of the uh, imagination of the, the, their heart was only evil continually, and yet the Bible says there were two men, one before the flood, Enoch, whom God just took to heaven, and another man named Noah that walked with God. So don't, don't think it's not possible in a wicked day to walk with God. It is possible. And they did it, and you and I can do it. But what does it mean to walk with God? In Reformers Unanimous, they, they, it is taught in the curriculum there that when you walk, the, the, the very definition of the term walk, if you had to explain what is walk to someone who's never doesn't know our language, never understood our language. What does it mean when you say the word walk and they say, what do you mean walk? You'd say, well, it would mean you take repeated steps in one direction. I'm taking a walk. Okay? Now, if I'm going to walk with God, it says I must learn to take then repeated steps in the same direction as God. Amos 3.3, can two walk together except they be agreed? You have to agree. So I have to agree with God in order to take repeated steps in the same direction as God. And, and you say, well, that's, that's walking with God. But then you ask yourself, what does that look like? How can, I, how can I take those repeated steps in the same direction as God? What will that look like in my life? And that's what I want to address for you this evening, okay? Uh, just give you some practical things here this evening. And number one is this. If you're going to walk with God, if you're going to take repeated steps in the same direction as God, number one, you must slow down. You must slow down. It says walk with God, not run with God. Nature moves very slowly. Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in a day? 12 hours in the night, 24 hours in a day, four seasons in a year. Woman carries a child nine months before she gives birth. You ever think it's, it was about 4,000 years from creation to Christ coming the first time? And now, since Christ has ascended back to heaven, we're 2,000 years later. You get the idea that God's not in a real big hurry. You ever, you ever felt like you were in more of a hurry than God? Besides all the time? Hmm? You have to slow down. God is never in a hurry. God is never in a rush. So if I'm going to walk with God, I have to slow down. I have to slow my pace down. I have to slow my mind down. How many of you have experienced, you, you want to sit down, you want to read the Bible, or you want to pray, and your mind is racing? Hmm? People say, man, I just, I try to focus, and man, my mind's just, you know why? Busy, busyness. Slow down. If the devil, listen, if the devil can't get you to sin, he'll get you to stay busy. So you won't have any time for God. I have to slow down. That's why when you read the Bible, we've always said, read the Bible slowly. Many people don't get anything when they read the Bible because they read it too fast. And you miss things that you would get if you'd slow down. And, and go deliberately, go carefully through the Bible. When you pray, you have to pray slowly. Have you ever decided, all right, I'm going to pray for a half hour and, and you got alone and maybe got on your knees or sat down in a chair or whatever you did and you're going to start praying and you prayed for everything you could think of and you looked up and it was about seven minutes. You ever done that? Huh? You know why? Because you talk fast. You go fast. Slow down. Slow down. You have to slow it down. Notice, Notice over in Matthew chapter 24. Would you look there? First book of the New Testament, Matthew 24. 
Turn there with me. Jesus is speaking here. He's answering a question to His disciples about the end, end of the earth, the end of the world, and the coming of Christ. Verse number 36. Jesus says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. But notice what He said. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's Matthew 24, verse 37. Well, what was it like in the days of Noah? Well, verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and notice this, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They didn't even realize it until the flood came and they all got taken away. Well, what was going on? They were marrying, giving in marriage, eating, drinking. You know what they were doing? They were just busy. They were just caught up in the pace of life. And they got so busy. I think, listen, I think some of them fully intended to get on the ark. They just thought they had time to wait. They're going to get around to that, but right now I got this. Right now I got the ball game to go to. Right now I've got this wedding to attend. Right now I've got to be over at this person's house. Right now I have this to do. And something always there to keep you going and going and going and never time to slow down. If you're going to walk with God, you have to slow down. You have to slow yourself down. There's always something else to do. There's always something else to see. There's always someone else to text. There's always someone else to call. There's always somewhere, someone else's Facebook to check. Hmm? The songwriter said, take time to be holy and speak oft with thy God. You have to make yourself slow down. That's, hey, that's not easy. But it is worth it. It is worth it. So you have to slow down. Let me give you number two. It kind of goes into this one. Develop the art of listening. Develop the art of listening. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6. Will you please? Deuteronomy chapter 6. Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, then Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Notice with me, if you will, verse number 4. God's going to give them some great commandments here about loving. In verse 5, about loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy might. In these words, verse 6, which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, shall talk of them. He's given some important commandments here, but he starts in verse 4 with one word. What's he say? Here. Hear, O Israel, listen up, hear me. He wanted them to listen to him. Hear. Remember, we talked last week about Elijah after Mount Carmel, and he ran from the Jezebel there, remember? And then God moved him over to Mount Horeb, and God says, God sent a, a, a strong wind that it broke the rocks in pieces, but God wasn't in the wind. Then he sent an earthquake, but he wasn't in the earthquake. He sent a fire, but he wasn't in the fire. Then finally a still, small voice. And he spoke to Elijah. You know why most people never think God talks to them? Because there is so much noise and so much stuff going on, they never hear him. You have to be quiet to hear Him. You have to listen for Him. You have to develop the art of listening. That's why Jesus said in Matthew, when you pray, where should you go? In your closet. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, scrape your shoes out of the way and move your clothes and crawl in your closet. That's not what He's talking about. He's talking about a quiet place where you won't be distracted. Somebody says, well, I pray when I'm driving to work. Are you crazy? I mean, I guess you can pray, Lord, keep me safe. But 
That can't be your prayer time. It's way too distracting. You better pay attention to what's going on around you. Ladies, you ever tried to talk to your husband when he's watching the game? How many will say that's useless? Amen. Because you'll, you'll, my, my wife loves to do that because then she can get away with anything, you know. <laughs> Come back and have all this stuff she bought at the store, and I'll say, man, what did you get this for? She goes, well, you said I could. <laughs> I did. Yeah, it's about the third quarter, and I said, wow, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not really listening. When you listen to somebody, you give them your undivided attention, don't you? Hmm? you you're never going to walk with God if you don't listen to Him. You have to learn to give God your undivided attention. So when it comes time to you get to your private place where you meet with God, then the radio's off, the television's off, the computer's off, my phone is off, hmm? The, the MP3 player's off. The iPod's off. Anything else you can think of? Uh, there's nothing but you and God. Hear that? Hear that? Did you hear it? Listen. That's quiet. That's so you can hear God. That's so you can listen to what He's saying. Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. That's an interesting word, that word still. You know what the word still means? It means to stop, has motion or agitation. To check or restrain. To make quiet, has to still the raging sea. Jesus stood up in that storm and He said, Peace, be still. And there was a great calm. It means to stop as noise. It means to silence. Like mothers still their babes. To appease, to calm, to quiet. To still the passions. You see, that's what it means to be still and know that I am God. So you can hear that still small voice that God is going to speak to you with. I want to be quiet so I can listen to the Spirit of God. I'm going to tell you something. God's not... I had one fellow who was telling me about... He said, I get up in the morning. It was, a, it was in one of our U meetings. And he said, I get up in the morning and I, I uh, listen to my music and I pray and, and, and then the rest of my day goes to H-E-L-L. That's the problem. God isn't going to speak over your music. God isn't going to speak. You know, you, you trying to talk to God when someone else is when that, when music's blaring and you can't you can't even hear yourself what you're saying. Quietness. Develop the art of listening. Number three. Become spiritually sensitive. Become spiritually sensitive. Now listen. I do that by surrounding myself with people who desire spiritual things. I do that by surrounding myself with people who desire spiritual things. If I'm learning to listen to God, I need to listen to people who've listened to God. Then I learn from them. That's why, that's why as we talked about in Sunday school this morning, that's why you have uh, parents, and that's why you have teachers, and that's why you have a pastor. That's why God gave you those authorities in your life. You know, what are they there for? What a parent, a teacher, a pastor, what are they there for? To guide you, to lead you, to direct you. To where? To God. See, they're there not just to guide you, to lead you, to direct you to nowhere. We're not like running around the wilderness, you know, going in circles. And the pastor, the teacher, the parent, listen, you're not directing them to you. The job is direct them to God. To teach them how to listen to God. That's the goal. So the people you're around, the people you spend time with, 
Do they bring you closer to God? Or do they push you further from God? Everybody you're around is either going to pull you closer to God or push you further from God. And that can be, by the way, that can be not just people in, you can reach out and touch, but that can be people who come into your TV screen that you invite into your home. It can be people you watch on your electronic device. Look at Psalm 1, would you please? Psalm chapter 1. Are you okay? Everybody doing all right? Psalm 1. You're, you're familiar with this psalm, Psalm 1. Notice verse 1. You're familiar with it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the who? Ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Ungodly, sinners, scornful. Scornful are critical ones. People who mock at things. Okay? So, blessed means happy. You're going to be happy if you don't Hang around the ungodly, those who enjoy sinning, and those who mock or are critical of people who love God. You can, you can do that if you want, but you're not going to be happy as a Christian. Now, if you, if you do, if, you, if you'll obey verse 1, and you'll say, okay, I'm not going to associate with them, that's not going to be my crowd, I'm not going to walk in the council of the ungodly. Uh, by the way, that includes Dr. Phil and Oprah and those, those people. And then I'm not going to stand in the way of sinners. And I'm not going to sit in the seat of the scornful. Then you can do number two. But if you don't get the wrong people out of your life, you'll never put the right people in your life. You'll never have number two. What's verse two? His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in His law doth He meditate. How often? Day and night. You're going you're gonna to enjoy and love the Word of God. Some of you have no appetite for the Bible. In fact, some of you here tonight, you don't even have a Bible with you. And when it comes time to stand up and read the Bible, you just stand there. I'm talking about people who come to church here every Sunday, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. Bring your Bible to church. We use the Bible. And what you're doing is you're speaking volumes about your love for Christ because you don't even want to have His Word with you. You have the Word of God with you, and God says the reason you don't love the Bible is because you're hanging around with the ungodly, with the sinners, and with the scornful. And until you'll never have a delight for the Word of God and a delight for the Bible till you say, I'm going to not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, not stand in the way of sinners, and I'm not going to sit in the seat of the scornful. I'm going to take those who would pull me away from God, and they're out of my life, and I'm going to hang around the people who love God the people who want to live for God, and then I'm going to begin to like what the Bible has to say. It all depends on what the negative before you get the positive. Now go to the New Testament with me, will you, to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Jesus speaking, John chapter 6. Notice with me verse number 63. John 6 and verse number 63. Jesus says this, It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are what, church? And they are... Jesus said, The words that I speak unto you, these words right here, you know what they are? They're spirit and their life. Your spiritual life is that book right there. Those words are spirit and they are life. It's what life's all about. It's a spirit-led life. The words of the Bible are going to give you the spirit life. You're, you'll never follow the spirit if you don't follow God's word. You'll never know what it is to be filled with the spirit if you're not filled with God's word. It's an impossibility. Here's the spirit, here's the life. It's not ritual, it's not form, it's not ceremony. 
It's spirit and it's life. And it's from the Word of God. It's not a song-led life. It's not a feelings-led life. It's a spirit-led life. A Bible-led life. That's why, listen, that's why it's such a battle to read the Bible and study the Bible and memorize the Bible and meditate in the Bible. That's why the flesh fights you so hard. It doesn't want to give up control. It's been in charge. It likes being in charge. And it doesn't want to give up that easily. But you, you, you yield to the Spirit and you feed the Spirit. And it knows the more you feed an appetite, the stronger it gets. You starve an appetite, the weaker it gets. And the more you don't even care for that. And pretty soon you won't need it anymore at all. I'll give you an example. How many of you, how many of you used to be smokers? See your hand? Wow, look at that. And I did say used to be, not currently, okay? Just making sure we're clear on that, all right? And uh, how many of you, when you first stopped smoking, I mean a day, two days, three days a week, you really didn't want to be around somebody who was smoking? That would have been a problem for you. Yeah. You know what? Appetite was still there. But you know what? You kept starving it and starving it and starving it. And pretty soon, you didn't have any desire for it anymore. Now, how many, how, many, how many of you feel like, boy, man, if I'm around somebody who's smoking now, boy, I know I could break down and have one. Hmm? No. You, that, that appetite has died. See? And, and listen, you starve it long enough, it'll die. And you feed the right attitude. You feed the spirit. And you do that. With God's word. And you think, and you really think you need 15 more minutes of sleep instead of your Bible in the morning? Hmm? Who do you think is telling you to do that? It's not the spirit. And it, no, it's not the devil. It's your flesh. <laughs> flesh says, no, you don't want to feed that spirit. You no, know, I, I, you need to feed me. Make me stronger. And we wonder why we go in the flesh all day. Because we gave him control. And we fed him. And when you feed it, he gets hungry. And I want more, I want more, and I want more. Until we're walking after the flesh and not after the spirit. When you, when you read and study and memorize and when you're in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night and getting the Bible taught to you and you're taking in the Bible and learning the Word of God, it is feeding that appetite of the Spirit. And it grows. It gets stronger. The flesh gets weaker. <clears throat> Slow down. Develop the art of listening. Become spiritually sensitive. Number four, as you yield to the Spirit, you'll be tested more severely. You'll be tested more severely. Look at Luke chapter 4 with me, would you? You're in John 6. Just go to your left there, one book. Luke chapter 4. Would you go there, please? And Jesus, <clears throat> being full of the Holy Ghost. Good thing? Yeah, that's a good thing. Returned from Jordan, this after his baptism, he was led by the Spirit into where? Wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended he afterward hungered, and the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. 
And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All power, all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. He brought him to Jerusalem, and set him upon a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. He didn't complete the verse, by the way. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. When the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. He went there full of the Spirit. He returned in the power of the Spirit, but he was severely tempted. This was Satan's attempt to get Christ not to go to the cross, but to give in. When you, when you slow down, you learn to listen, you become sensitive to the Lord, and you're, you're beginning to have that communication back and forth between you and God. You're developing that walk with Him. You, you better believe Satan's going to do what he can to disrupt that. Understand something. Once you receive Christ as your Savior, Satan can never have your soul. That belongs to God. And He keeps us. We're not keeping ourselves, thank God. He keeps us. And Satan cannot have you, but he will do whatever he can to destroy your life. And to not have you bring glory to God. And not have you have any fellowship with God. And he does that through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Because that's all that's in the world. 1 John 2 and verse 15. What did Jesus use when he fought the temptation of Satan? He used the Word of God. He used the only weapon we have. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Remember what we said earlier? The Spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. So why do I keep messing up? Why do I keep failing? How come every time I, I get tempted, I just give in? What, what's going on? Because you're trying willpower, but not word power. It's not willpower that you need. It is word power that you need. You need the word of God. You need to know your weapon. You need to be able to use your weapon. He fought Satan. How do you resist Satan? With the word of God. Hey, Jesus was the son of God. Who's, who's in a believer? Christ dwells in your heart by faith, Colossians says. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Well, that one in us is Jesus Christ himself, the Son of God. He could have just spoken something to Satan. He's greater than he is anyway. But he didn't. Why didn't he? He used the Bible. He used it as written. Why do you think he did that? Do you think it might have been to teach us how we should do it? That he was trying to give us an example? Why was he baptized? Example for us. Do you think he still was giving us an example? I absolutely do. So you're not going to, listen, you're not going to overcome the bad habits by saying, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. You know what you're going to do? You're going to do it. Because you're thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And if you think about it, you're going to do it. You don't overcome evil by telling yourself, I'm not going to do evil. You overcome evil with good. You fill your heart and fill your mind with the Word of God. Use the Word of God on Satan. 
It is written. So be, don't, don't, don't think, well, boy, when I get to where I can listen to God and be quiet with God and have a, a walk with God, boy, Satan will leave me alone. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. So listen, the Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. Don't be ignorant of his strategies. So, so expect that. Be, be on guard for that. Be looking for that. And when he shows up, you're not surprised. You're expecting them. And you know what to do. Rely on God's word, not your will. Not your resistance. You can give some resistance, but you resist him by letting them know it's God's word. Hey, the book is, the word of God is quick. What's quick mean? Alive. It's alive. And it's powerful. More powerful than your word or my word. This is, this is what will do it. So give him the word of God. He said you're going to slow down. You're going to develop the art of listening. You're going to become spiritually sensitive. You're going to yield to the Spirit and realize you're going to be tested more severely. Number five, you'll live by the law of love. You will live by the law of love. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says the fruit of the Spirit, the outcome of, of being controlled by the Spirit of God, by having that intimacy with God, is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. That'll be, the, that'll be the outcome. If that's the outcome, people see that. That'll be obvious. How about you? Would you agree that it's obvious when I'm not yielded to the Spirit? Hmm? Don't you think it'll be obvious when we are yielded to the Spirit? Hmm? And, and if you remember the book of Ephesians, when we're yielded to the Spirit, we're filled with the Spirit, the very first place the, the, that God takes us to is husbands, wives. He takes us where we live. The best one, the best one, the best one I can ask if I'm filled with the Spirit, if I'm uh, walking in the Spirit, is Mrs. Slayback at home. Hmm? Ask your mate how you're doing. Ask those who are someone who's close to you how you're doing. You live by the law of love. We spoke about that this morning briefly about loving God. If I love God, I'm going to love the things that God loves. I'm going to, and, and by the way, you, you, you love something, you don't mind spending time on that. If I love the things that God loves, I'm going to love spending time with God. I'm going to love spending time with the people of God. I don't mind spending some time at the house of God. mind uh, spending you, you want to listen I want to talk right because I love him I want to dress right because I love him I want to I want to uh, have a good testimony because I love him I want to help others because I love him what's Matthew 22 Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul your mind all your strength the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself the law of love, what you'll find is you begin, to, you, you begin to live with wanting to willingly, sacrificially give yourself for the benefit of others with no thought of return. And you'll willingly and sacrificially give yourself to God with no thought of return. I just love God. I want to please God. Why are you at church on Sunday night? You ought to be here because you love God. You want to do what's pleasing in His sight? That's all. Just because you love Him. I want to give the gospel because I love Him. I want to help others because I love Him. I want to faithfully give because I love Him. 
I don't want to talk bad about another Christian because I love God. I want to be critical because I love God. I don't, want to, I don't want to tear other people down because I love God. I want to think the best and hope the best. Charity believeth all things and hopeth all things. Beareth all things. It means you've, if somebody's done you wrong, the easiest thing in the world is to pass that hurt on to somebody else. You've all heard it, hurting people hurt people. Say somebody hurts you, yet can you get past that and say that's because they're hurting? I have a choice. I can make it stop with me. I can pass it on and hurt a bunch of other people. Why would you do that? If you love God. Love God. I live by the law of love. And then lastly, number six, you'll be confident. When you learn to walk with God, you'll be confident that you're a child of God. Romans 8 and verse 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. When you slow down, you develop the art of listening to God, you become spiritually sensitive, you yield to the Spirit, you resist the devil, you live by the law of love, you're never going to doubt you're a child of God. You're never going to wonder. It's when you don't rid yourself of distractions, when you get caught up in busyness, and you neglect God's Word, and you neglect time with God, and you never slow down, you never listen. Anything you learn about God, you just hear other people say. You've heard other people talk about. You heard somebody on the radio or somebody on the internet say. You don't have anything where God said anything to you. You know what happens? You begin to doubt whether you're really saved. You begin to doubt your salvation. And so what do most people do? I better do it again. I better make another profession of faith. I always, I always, it, it, it always grieves me when I ask somebody if they know Christ their Savior, when were you saved? And they'll say, well, the first time. First time. How many times were there? Hey, I got news for you. You only get saved one time. There's only one time you get saved. It's like, you know, when's your birthday? Uh, tomorrow's Brother Taylor's birthday. 39 and holding. Huh? And I say, Brother Taylor, you, so uh, when were you born? And he says, now, let's see, which time? I say, I look at him like, huh? You only have one birthday, physically. You can have two birthdays. You have a spiritual birthday. But just you got one physical birthday, you have one spiritual birthday. But it's amazing how many people you run into, Brother French, that have said, oh, I've, I've accepted Christ two, three, four times. See, but listen, why, why is that? Because when you're lacking the assurance, repeated professions of faith don't solve your lack of assurance. slowing down, developing the art of listening, learning to be sensitive to the Spirit of God, to the things of God, being able to yield to the Spirit, the words that are Spirit, they are life, getting the, the wrong, wrong things out of your life and putting the right things into your life. Going through the testing, but by the way, being victorious in the testing because you're fighting with the Word of God, not your willpower, because that doesn't work. Then you know what? You'll have no, living by the law of love, you'll have no doubt. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Isn't it a shame? To have a heavenly father and not get to know him. Isn't it, isn't it a shame to have a father and not get to know what he's like? 
We were, we were made to know him and to fellowship with him. Adam and Eve, we know from when God came down after they sinned, he came down in the cool of the day to do what? Take a walk with Adam and Eve. That's what they did. They took walks. After they sinned, that couldn't happen anymore. You had to take them out of the garden. Oh, but he sent his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save those which were lost. No, that which was lost. That which was lost was man having the ability to walk with his God. Jesus came to restore that. Jesus didn't just come to save you from hell. Though, thank God, he does. But that's not, you've not fulfilled the purpose. Well, I'm saved, that's all that matters. Oh, no, no. There's more than that that matters. You're saved to walk with God. That which was lost. And so walk with him. I want to give you one verse from Micah 6 8. Micah 6 8. Micah 6 8 says this He has showed thee, O man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Let's walk humbly with our God. Heavenly Father, take the truth now this evening. Lord, we thank you for your desire to be willing and desiring to walk with us, your children. And Lord, I pray that tonight you'd put a great passion and desire in our heart that we would desire to walk with you. The Lord, you take these truths this evening, just some practical things that I hope will whet the appetite of those in this room to say, you know what, I can do that. I'm going to ask God to help me. Because I don't just want to know about God. I want to know God. Lord, thank you that you said if we'll draw nigh to you, you will draw nigh to us. Draw nigh to us this evening, Father. Teach us and help us to walk with you. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer in just a moment. I wonder how many folks tonight had simply say, Preacher, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart tonight. There's some, those were some things that will help me. And God helping me, I desire to walk with Him. And I'm going to begin to implement those things that you spoke of this evening. I truly desire to have a walk with God. Pastor, pray for me this evening. Will you slip your hand up, Christian? Amen. 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 You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have your invitation. God has spoken to your heart, then respond to Him. Start tonight. And then, and then tell God, when you kneel to pray, tell Him where you're going to meet with Him. You have a place at home where you sleep, you have a place at home where you eat. You have a place at home where you watch television. You have a place at home maybe where you visit with company. You have a place where you go to your computer. You ought to have a place where you meet God at your house. That's where I meet with God. Make it that place. And walk with God. If you're here tonight and you're saved, never been baptized, when others are coming to pray, you come forward. We'll get your information. We'll, make, we'll, we'll tell everybody you've been saved. You're going to get baptized. If you're saved and baptized and you believe this is where God's leading you to belong, then we welcome you to come. Whatever it is that God's dealing with your heart about, obey Him this evening. Father, thank you for speaking to hearts this evening. And Father, I pray now that your will will be done in this invitation. May each individual do exactly what you're telling them to do in their heart. May you meet with us, Lord. Hear our prayer as we bow humbly before you. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist is going to play. 
as Brother Bob's going to sing. As she plays and he sings, God has spoken to your heart. You respond to him this evening, will you? That's right. My soul and the Savior, not of this world's delusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine. There's nothing That's right. between. That's right. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. So that his blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear. Let nothing between. Nothing between like worldly pleasure. Habits of life. Though harmless they seem, must not my heart from him ever sever. He is my all, there's nothing between, nothing between my soul and the Savior, so that his blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear, let nothing between. face may be seen, nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear, let nothing be between. Be seated for a minute if you would please. Let nothing between your soul and the Savior. Amen? Amen. And uh, make it a priority. There's a uh, and, and let, me, let me assure you, okay, can I, can I help you? You say, ah, it's easier for you, you're the pastor. <laughs> there are a million things I, I need to do when I wake up in the morning. I, I can think of all kinds of things, hit the ground running to do. And, and I have to stop, and I have to slow down, and I have to take time. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just as difficult uh, for me as it is for you. But it's absolutely necessary. Amen. It's absolutely necessary. And uh, it's nothing, nothing like it in all the world. Uh, fulfill the purpose for which God saved you. Uh, Mary hath chosen that needful part. That's what it's all about. It all stems from there. Okay? All right. Hey, we're glad to have the, the fantastic four here tonight. All right? <laughs> Laurel Carroll. Laurel here received Christ through Savior this morning, and she's coming tonight to, to be scripturally baptized. And then we'll do the ladies first. We're glad to have Mercedes Wooten. Mercedes received Christ as her Savior this morning and going to follow the Lord in baptism this evening. And then uh, her fiancé is Jeffrey Smith, and uh, Jeffrey accepted Christ this morning, and he's also going to be baptized tonight. And then Daniel Smith, and Jeffrey is Daniel's son. And uh, Daniel received Christ as his Savior and wants to follow the Lord in baptism as well. Fantastic, isn't it? Amen. These are, let's see, this is Carol. Uh, you would be a son-in-law. These would be grandchildren then, right? And uh, Carol Hoskins has prayed for these for years. Amen. Right, Carol? Huh? Just when you think nothing's working, nothing's happening, look what God does. Praise the Lord. That's wonderful, Carol. We're rejoicing with you. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Wallace is right here. Ladies, you follow her down. I think Brother Wallace is already down there. Yeah. Fellas, you just go with them, if you would. Yeah, follow them right out this door right here, down the steps, and we'll get you ready. 
to be baptized, all right? And Brother Bob, you take it, and we'll get ready to baptize him. All right, well, let's, uh, wow, we got hands in the air already. <coughs> I guess we'll sing a few uh, favorites. Brother Pete? 506. Five, oh, Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Let me hear you now. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day. Amen. That's got to be up there in my top ten. Carol? Number three. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch. Isaac, 242, 242. All right, Jesus loves the little children. I want to hear you sing out. <coughs> All right, let's sing it together. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children, the world. Gage, 275. It is well, it is well with my soul, I believe, anyway. All right, yeah. Let's sing that first all together. When peace like a river. Two four six. Higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Yes, ma'am. 463. 463. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. 
Oh, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. Oh, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is gold up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the roll. profession of your faith in Christ as your Savior, and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, bearing the likeness of Jesus' death, and raised in the likeness of his This is Mercedes Wooten. Mercedes, upon a public profession of your faith in Christ as your Savior, and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, bearing the likeness of Jesus' death, and raised in the likeness of his Amen. This is Jeff Smith. Jeff, upon a public profession of your faith in Christ as your Savior, and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, bearing the likeness of Jesus' death, and raised in the likeness of Jesus' death. Smith, Daniel, upon a public profession of your faith in Christ as your Savior, and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, bearing the likeness of Jesus' death, and raising yeah. the likeness of Jesus' death. And the servant said, Master, it is done as thou commanded, and yet there is room. Amen. Let's go to number 421. 421. You ask me why I'm happy, and I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. 421. Let's sing that first verse together. <clears throat> this might be a new one for some of you. You ask me why I'm happy, so I'll just tell you why. Because my sins are gone. Scoffers who ask me where they are, I say my sins are gone. There, underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary, as far removed as darkness is from dawn, in the sea of God's forgetfulness, that's good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. Isn't that good? Amen. Dan, 488, 
488. The longer we do this, the more you guys are going to have to sing. As you can tell, my voice is just about gone. Speaking of gone, a new name in glory. I was once a sinner, but I came. <coughs> this was freely given, and I found that he always And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white robed angels sing the story. A sinner has come home, for there's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven. Amen. We have four new ones written down in glory today, don't we? Amen. Brother Chuck? Two, two, three. Two, two, three. <coughs> Draw me near. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, near, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side all right one more yes ma'am four seven zero that sounds like it's in the jesus loves me range no wonderful peace all right <clears throat> Far away in the depths of my spirit tonight rolls a melody sweeter than song. In celestial like strains, it unceasingly falls o'er my soul like an infinite calm. Peace, peace, oh. Wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of love. All right, let's stand together and uh, make sure um, Laurel. Um, somebody escort her to the back there so when folks go out they can congratulate her and make room. If you need to move those chairs, Andy and Nikki, where you are, so we can line those folks up so when you go out tonight you can congratulate them. When um, Jeff and Mercedes and Daniel come up, make sure they get their way back there too, would you? I'd like you to congratulate these folks and welcome them into the church family. And uh, that's exciting. It's just a the Laurel came because Xavier has visited her, Scotty was with him and visited her for several weeks and uh, kept giving her the gospel and witnessing to her and today was the day and uh, she come forward and she said I'm ready to be saved that's what she said wasn't it and I'm ready to be saved and these, these other folks are just results of years of prayers by Carol and her faithful testimony, and uh, it's great, great to see it happening. Amen. Father, thank you for a wonderful day today. Thank you, Lord, for meeting with us. Thank you for decisions that have been made for you. And, Lord, we give you the praise and we give you the glory for it. Thank you, God, that you're still in the saving business. And, Father, we're so thankful that we're Christians, so thankful that you're our God, so thankful we can spend a Sunday like this. Lord, thank you for each one that's made their way here Sunday morning and Sunday night. Now we pray you'll dismiss us with your care. 
Make us mindful of your presence as we leave this place tonight. May others see Christ in us this week. We pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's sing it together. Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go. For it's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed.